I'll do the chums as I captain of the And today, chums, I'm planning to set up a auto farm base that farms nanites, that allows you to fish at the same time. And I'm going to be farming nanites from these robots. And I'm also going to be putting down some sort of mineral extractors and things like that on this planet as well. I mean, it has got emerald here, so not a bad resource. If we can have an emerald farm, that will be quite nice because emerald spins up into, you know, chromatic metal. You, always, you can also sell emerald for a fair bit. Not a lot, but not as much as activated idiom. But yeah. So, to get started, what you're probably going to need is a load of salvage data. Now, you can find salvage data on any planet at all, and it's a case of just looking for the right sort of symbol in the ground to dig up the salvage data. Now, at the moment, there's not much of those around. Oh, but look at those! Look at those robots! Oh, they're freaking glorious, aren't they? Look at them things! Very cool! Okay, right. So I need to find a perfect spot for a base, but I'll do that in a moment. I need to go up into the Nexus and show you a few prerequisite base parts that you're going to need. So yeah, you're going to need to get some salvage data and head on up to the Spatial Anomaly, what I call the Nexus. I'll see you up there, people. Anyway, let's jump over into Game View. And let's get on up to the old Spatial Anomaly. Lovely. I'll see you in there. Okay, chums, so to make your auto farm, you're going to need some auto farming base parts. So let's go on through the actual catalogue here and let's see if we can find some auto farming pieces. So if you do want to farm creatures like those robots for nanites, you're going to need an automatic feeder. You're going to find this on the technology modules area. So you want the auto feeder and the livestock unit so you want those two, definitely. Now, there are some other automated items, like an automated fishing trap, which is going to come in handy if you get a nanites as well, if we can find a place near to some water. We've also got an atmosphere harvester, which is going to give you some gas from the actual planet. There's also automated mining units, which I haven't used in time, and I don't know whether they still work, so I'm going to give those a go as well. And then there's this oxygen harvester, which is going to get you oxygen on the fly as well. So all those are pretty darn lovely but that's not it when it comes to auto harvesting because if we want to get the emerald out of the ground I don't think these things work anymore but we will try them if I keep going over this way I should be able to find some other auto harvesting items that are going to be quite handy for this planet and for what I'm attempting to do to make myself a lovely sort of ambient farm ah yeah they are on here so this is under in industrial modules and you're going to want the mineral extractor, the gas extractor, a supply depot and a supply pipe. And all of these require power. So you are going to need batteries and solar panels, biofuel or whatever you want to go for. And if we're super lucky, we might, we might even find an electromagnetic hotspot in close proximity to these. It's not always the case, though, people. But anyway, that's everything you're going to need from that centralised console. So that's a heck of a lot of salvage data you're going to need. Now, another thing that does help is to head on over to this chap, Eos, who looks like a freaking shark, and uh, pick yourself up a module inside of here for your multi-tool. And the one that you want is the survey device. This lets you scan for those hot spots. Right, well, uh, now I need to find the perfect location on that planet, which could take me a little while. I'm going to go head down to the planet, and I'm going to show you how to use the survey scanner. But it could take me ages to find the most decent spot for this auto farm to work in conjunction. But the nice thing about this planet is it has got lots of breaks with water, so fishing shouldn't be too much of an issue. What could be an issue is you see all these mountains. It's finding a nice little flat area to place a base, you know. But not only that, I've got to try and find a resource so I can get the emerald out the ground, which is a mineral. Uh, so yeah, I want to make this mineral extraction, not gas so much. And uh, the ship that I'm in right now, the UFO ship, the new ship, it's got a problem with landing. It really doesn't like landing, especially where there's the odd bit of plantage. So that's, that's a bit annoying. Righto, people. So when you bring up your scanner, you're going to have this one as standard which, yeah, which is, is for scanning creatures and stuff. I'm just going to get these scanned while, while I can. But then, if you press right on here, this is for target sweeping. And next one over is for hotspots for power. That's electricity. And look at this. We've got a mineral 
and it's a B class, which isn't too bad. Now, if you get an A or an S class, you're going to get a lot more out the ground and you're going to get it a lot faster. At least this isn't a C class. So I'm happy having that as, as a B class. Having a B class is OK, but I need to see whether it is Emerald. And it's a case of bringing this up and getting closer to the direction that you've got to go in and getting locked onto it and finding it. OK, so I'm going to keep, keep tracing this marker and hopefully find whatever this hot spot is. And then when we get to the hot spot, I'm going to look to see if there's a power hot spot nearby. OK, I won't be a moment. OK, chums, we're getting very close to where this marker is now. There we go. And that's found my hot spot for mining. Let's see if it's emerald. It's salt. OK, well, we don't really want salt. We would like emerald. So I need to try and find another spot for the base. OK, well, you don't always get lucky first time, people. As long as I can find a, a decent emerald one, I'll be, I'll be happy. All right, I'll reconvene when I find an emerald one. OK, chums, now I'm looking for another one. And you listen to the scanner. You can see the, hear the noise it's making. Now, if I scan this way, just moving very slowly, just rotating, it should make a different noise at some point. Just rotate slowly. Getting closer, hopefully. Come on. There you go. You see that bat noise? That means in carry on going in that direction, and eventually you should get a hot spot appear. But that's the direction I was in momentarily ago. And there's another pickaxe that way. I'm a bit nervous that it might be the same one that I've already picked up on. So I'm going to get on my ship. I've swapped ships. I'm going to fly a little bit further. So that's how you can find them. If they're not showing up, that is, and just do that little rotation method that I just showed you. Anyway, I'll reconvene later. OK, Jums, I've found a hot spot. It's only a C class and it's emerald. So I'm going to stick my little probe there. It's on the side of a freaking mountain. I mean, look how high up it is. Now, luckily, there is some water down there. I could probably build a nice little base down there. That's not a problem. So what I want to do is put a base computer here. But I want to put it down there a little. I want that to be kind of in the middle of the two places. So I've got a little way from my harvesting to go, but it doesn't matter because I can just build a little platform up there. But what I want is this base computer to be close enough to that shoreline so I can fish. And also have a little farm for animals where it's a little bit flatter. So I think about here might be the in-between point for the two. Because look, there's my beacon all the way up there. Let's just hope that that's still inside a base range. Yeah, fun times. Here we go, claim base. Let's see. I think we might be all right there. Right, so now we've got that beacon there. What I want to do now is head on up and make sure that I can build myself a little platform and put the extractors there. Now, you can go into your options and the difficulty and you can change it from whatever mode you're in to creative mode, meaning that you can build for free. The only time that you can't really just change your mode on the fly like that is if you're wanting to get like the trophy for completing the game and get into the center of the universe and say permadeath or survival there's a couple of trophies like if you're trying to get the platinum trophies you you won't be able to if you go and change your game mode or if you've locked your settings you can't change your game mode but anyway you know how to build a base but what i'm going to do here is i'm going to build myself a little platform that's a little bit flatter so we go and I want to put that right under where that, that thing is. OK, so about there, I guess. That do. OK. And that's going to be where my collectors go. Let's get up there. All right, so it's going to be my little collecting platform. And I should be OK to put a few more in here. Let's actually put them into the rock face as well. So I'm going to make quite a few. Might as well go to town. 
And then if I ever do need any emerald, I can just come back here. Right, so now I just need to stand out the way slightly. So I'll stand over here. I'm going to need power supplies. Now, if I do scan, we'll see if there's a power supply in nearby location. There isn't really, so we'll put in our own power anyhow. So for power, what I tend to do, what I like to do anyway, is put in a couple of little square rooms and I'll put the power inside of those. I don't know what you like to do, but that's what I like doing anyway. If I can find my freaking square rooms. Oh, right, there they are. And I like the glass ones as well. Makes more sense to me anyway. Right, so I'm going to build, build my little power hut over here. And it, it doesn't have to be huge. That'll do. Then I would like to get into my power hut. So I'm going to stick a little door on here as well. Meow. And then I can stick all these in. The reason I like a little power hut is then these sort of just lock on. You know, there's no sort of and you don't have to worry about wires and all that sort of jazz either. Everything inside of this power hut is going to have power. Just remember to put in a couple of batteries as well. But hopefully putting all of these in is going to give me enough power. To power all of these mining facilities and my base further down, maybe depending. OK, now I need a couple of batteries. I mean, I'm not going to ever go in here, this little power hut. It's just it's just here. There we go. That's all my power. Now I need to put in my auto harvesters. So this was a mineral extractor. So what I want is the mineral extractor thing. Yep. So there we go. I'm going to stick these along here. Doesn't matter if they ingress into the mountainside all too much. And you can see there at the moment they're saying that they don't have power, which is fine. Stick those there. So this is where we're going to be harvesting everything from. So we've got quite a fair few harvesters. I can get rid of that that little thing right now, there, that that little beacon afterwards. It doesn't really matter. You can stick it on top of the beacon. Right. Oh. And I think that's going to be enough. I might not be able to put one there because I'm standing there. No, no, I can. But I kind of want to leave that door free. I'm not going to be overly greedy. That's all cool. Right. So, chums, now that I've got all my solar panels down and my batteries, I'm just going to wait for the sun to come up, obviously, before that my base will get power. But in the meantime, I can use my electric cables and I can get these connected. Now, I have put a battery outside of here just to make it easier to see where the cable starts. And now I need to connect up all of the um, power to these. Now, I must have pressed L2 when I was putting these down because I started putting down some gas extractors. So the eagle eyes of you out there might have noticed that I've now deleted those and put in mining units again. But here we go. These are mining extractors and I'm just connecting them all together. You know when they've got power because they boost into life and they start sort of gyrating up and down and making a heck of a lot of noise. So sorry for the actual sound right now, people. Let's cut over here, back row. And connect that to there. And it's just a case of connecting them all together. Oh, got to be careful with the snap point sometimes, but there we go. That's them all gyrating. And I should be able to tell that they're all moving. There you go. Yeah, they're all going. Lovely. So now they're actually doing their extracting, which is cool. Now, I don't know whether you've got to hook them all up with these cables, but I often do. So this is to pass any resources that they gather. And you need to then put those to a storage silo. So I'm just going to connect all these together as well. I think you get the, the idea. Pretty much the same way that I connected the cables. I'm now connecting this supply sort of pipe. Like so. And I'm going to connect these ones as well. Lovely.
power. And then I need to connect these to a storage pipe in a bit. Well, I'll put it off the back of this one. And we need to have a storage chamber. But I'm going to put the storage chamber down nearer to the shoreline and near to my main base. So now what I'm going to do is jump on down and see what I can do. Yeah, right. So I'll just jump down here. Now, what I might do is just put a storage bin there. Because basically what it does is it sort of pumps it from one place to another. So if I get this cable there and just link it from there up to this platform, at least it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to get to because this is freaking vertical. It's not the best place to build one of these farms. So I can see that it keeps going green, but I want to make sure that I've definitely connected it to the right place. So connect it there. Pat. Now when I go down to that little storage silo that I've just built here, you daisy chain these things together to bring it to where you want it to go. I can see that it is pumping emerald down, so it is working. It's just going to take time and a half before it gets completely full. Right, -o. so I'm just going to carry on down, all the way down to where my base marker is. But every, every say, few hundred U's or whatever, I'm going to put down another one of those things to daisy chain together. So you know what, I'm going to stick one right next to my base, about here. My base computer, I should say. So there we go. I'm going to stick another one of those. Did I get the right one? No, I didn't. There we go. Supply Depot. There we go. And then I want to get the cable. And I want to connect that one to the one that's like halfway down the hill. Like so. Daisy chaining them together, like I mentioned. So this is just for the mineral part. This is just for emeralds so far. We will be making a fauna automated farm as well at this base something to mention is these supply depots they don't actually need power on them they, they automatically just work anyway without power so don't worry about putting electric cables to them okay right well i'm all the way down by the shoreline now it's quite a long way down from where my base computer is it's not all that flat and i'm not seeing many robots down here you know like for farming of the robots there was a little area further up the hill where I did see a couple of robots spawning just here. So I might make this my auto farming area. Not that I'm seeing a great deal of robots, but I'm seeing more than I'm seeing down at the shoreline. So here might be the best place to put down my fauna type farming type items. So let's have a look, see if we can find those. So here we go. Where are they hiding? They're in one of these menus. Here they go. Livestock unit and automated feeders. We're going to be putting those there, but for now, I'm just going to put another storage silo right here. So there we go. It's because I need to bring that pipe all the way down, obviously, don't I? Okay, so I'll just connect those together. Chikapow! And then I've got to take it all the way, all the way up there somewhere. Yeah, by my base computer. Okay, now that was a bit of a freaking walk. There we go. So that's all connected now. So we've got that on. Pretty darn awesome. So this little harvester down here now should be taking all the resources down. Now, don't worry. You don't need a whole load of them. You only need one. I know it's a little bit weird when we've got all those extractors and you just got one storage silo. But the whole yield goes into here. The whole yield. So here you go. If I go into there and have a quick look. And it still says that it's empty, but it is it is going to get there. It's just going to take a little while before it gets there. Hokey pokey. Righto. So now I'm going to put down my farming and my items for these animals. So we go. We want a livestock feeder. Let's stick that there. This is oh, actually that's the auto harvester. The feeders are these things. Now you want to sort of stick them where you can see creatures spawning. So I put one there. Spread them out a little bit. Just to sort of entice creatures in. I put one there. I put one up there. And I'll, I'll stick one right by this, I think. There. Okay, right. Now we've got to get power to all of this lot. Now, I want to kind of leave the power at the top of the hill as well. But I'm just going to go into the base building parts. I'm going to put down another little power silo here. You saw me do one, so it, you kind of get the idea of how I'm going to do another one. So I'm just going to put a couple of little rooms up here. And um, yeah, I'll reconvene once I've got the solar panels in. OK, chums, well, I've got all my solar panels in there and two batteries. And I'm just going to put another battery down here. 
and then I'm just going to connect the wire from here up onto any of those in there. Nice. Now we've got the power coming out of here. I can then go and power up all of these because you do need to add power onto all of them. OK, right. So let's get all these connected and even on this thing that harvested everything. And off of there, over to here, boom, up there, there. And is that all of them? Is that all the ones I put down? I'm sure I put down one more. OK, maybe I didn't. Fine. Well, that's OK. Right. OK, for whatever reason, I lost power. Hmm. Interesting. Maybe there's not enough power going into everything at the moment. Or uh, maybe I need a little bit more power. Or a little bit more juice from the solar panel array. OK, well, I might just extend this out then, put a few more solar panels in. So sometimes that might happen. Now, you can put double decker rooms on top of here. So if I go to there, get, grab this and put on an extra floor. Actually, that's not going to work. I need to extend out this way. I do. Oh, sorry, little creature. OK. Right, now let's put some more solar panels in. And hopefully that's going to give us enough power. Still showing there's not enough power. Unless I didn't connect the wire properly from here to there. There we go. It was a wiring fault, people. Righto. Now I need to sort of put in some sticks or some bait inside of here. Now, the weird thing is, these creatures normally eat the batteries, not bait sticks. But um, I think you can just put in... Yeah, because I can't put those in anyway. So here we go. I'll put in the auto feeder. Let's see if they work anyway. Lovely, lovely. I'll stick those in there. I'm going to have to create a load more of those bait sticks now. Just make a load of them. And I'll just go refill all these and we'll see if it starts harvesting from the creatures in the area. Done. The only thing is, it looks like some of those creatures have despawned, doesn't it? Now, they are, these things are a little bit tetchy anyway. They very... They're very hit and miss if they actually farm precisely. I'll stick that over there. Uh, there you are. Get. There you go. Now well, let's get those in there. Kaboom. OK. Well, where did the robots go? There were some robots here a moment ago. They've gone and disappeared. They've gone and despawned on me, people. All right. Right, well, that's going to be where my farm is anyway for the creatures. And hopefully they're going to reappear at some point. They were here originally. Great, they're not here now, though, obviously. All right, well, that's going to be a little bit of a pointless exercise. But that should hopefully start harvesting creatures. Right, I'm going to head on over here. And now I'm going to build myself a nice little jetty. And I'm going to put down some auto fishing items as well. So we go. I want myself a nice little jetty. Pow, pow, and pow. Right, I'm going to fish off of this thing. So I'm just going to put a little bit of a, a side arm on it because I don't want to fall into the water. You know, side rail, I should say. Now snap on. There we are. That'll do. So this is going to be great for fishing. And then if I go into the auto area, I should have those fishing traps. Where are you, fishing traps? OK, they're not under there. Are they in here? No. Ah, they're in there. Removable tech. Now it says that they, might, they can only be constructed underwater. Well, all right, let's get in the water then. Let's see if that helps. There we go. Stick one there. Now you can put down three of these things. There we are. Put another one here. 
And you have to go in and out the menu each time, and I'll put another one there. There we go. There we got our fishing pods. We've got our free fishing pods, and we can fish off of this now as well. Pretty sweet. A chow! I do a little spot of fishing. You catch a little fishy on a little dishy when the fish comes in. I don't know where we've got bait on, so we'll be lucky if we catch a fish. But it's night time now, so all of my uh, solar panels will just shut down anyhow. Come on. We'll go check on all of our auto farming bits in a bit. Yep, get him. Lovely jubbly. Got ourselves a crab. All right, well, those feeders are going to take a little while to catch. And I'd imagine our little farm that's just up here is going to take a while to get any creatures feeding here since they've all freaking naffed off which is a bit of a git you know what i'm gonna get rid of the all the wires i don't like seeing all the wires so i'm just gonna stick this thing up there somewhere there you go then all the wires should vanish there we are i'm hoping when the daytime comes round, creatures might spawn back in now there is a trick to get creatures to respawn anyway so if i just call my ship in just here Chickapow, jump in my ship, out of my ship, create a save, and reload my save. Hopefully we might start see creatures spawning back in. But it's best to do that when daylight rolls back around, really. Okay, so while we're waiting for, you know, daylight to roll around, up by this little power area here, you know what I might do is build a couple of oxygen harvesters. Now, I haven't used the oxygen... Oh, God, look, there's a creature right there now. All right, well, you know what? I think I can put down one more fauna feeder anyway. So where's the fauna feeders? They are here. So let's just put down an automated feeder. And I'll put one there as well. Now just connect that. I'll connect it directly into one of those, to be fair. Might as well. And have we got any more bait sticks I can stick in here? No, not right now. Of course I haven't. Okay, let's uh, go down here then. Create some more bait sticks. Lovely, lovely bait sticks. Let's get them in there. There we go. Ah, there's there's quite a few. Okay, well, I'll put down another auto harvester right there then as well. Connect that to there. And hopefully we'll start getting some food from there. Because if that if that little area is not working over there, hopefully this one will work here. Anyway, where was I? I was going to put down some other harvesters, wasn't I? So I want to put down an oxygen harvester right here. Now, I don't think these need power. Or... I don't think they do, anyway. Ah, you actually just put fuel into these things here. There we go. Charge it up like that. They don't need a power cable, but you need to put fuel in them. Okay. So why isn't... Oh, you can only put one in the local area. Fair enough. There we go. We've got an oxygen harvester that's automatically harvesting oxygen. Look at that. I've got six oxygen already. Well, that's on the bake already. Let's have a look, see if this thing's already picking up some bits and bobs from these creatures. Not as yet. Interesting. It should should start getting stuff going from these guys directly into there eventually and it should be chewy wires there we go we've got some chewy wires that's working as well brilliant so that's all working that's now harvesting let's go and check on my silo to see if that's now harvesting as well let's head on over here it's all coming to plan slowly but surely there we go we've got 500 that we could get right now Lovely. So that's auto harvesting as well. We've got chewy wires. We've got emerald. We've even got the fish. They should be catching fish now in these like little things down here. Let's go and have a look and see how they're getting on. So this is a proper little automated farm. It's not in the best place. I'm sure you guys in the viewerverse could do a lot better. I just made this video to show you the principle of it. But there we go. We're getting those as well. Awesome. So we there is one other auto harvester. Now, if I look for a resource deposit that's in close range of me, is there any? I've, when I was at the top of the hill looking down, I did see one that was fairly close. 
Is that the closest one? 500 ewes? All right, I'll find it anyway. I think it's further up the mountain. I saw it when I was at the top. I'd go back up there and I'd have a look back down and see if I can spot it from up there. All right, well, it'll be a moment. Okay, chum, so it's a salt deposit and it's not too far away from my base. At least I don't think it's too far away from my base. We'll find out whether it is or isn't. Okay, now on these, you used to be able to put down a little mini auto harvester. Now, I haven't seen these things work in freaking time, so if I can get this to work, that would be pretty darn amazing. Automatic unit. There you go. Stick one there. Stick another one there. And put another one there. Now, these, you have to fuel these too. So you have to go in, and you have to, like, put fuel in. But they're going to automatically give me emerald. Well, it's going to give me salt from these anyway. So if I do ever need salt, at least I can come back here and get some salt, I suppose. But they're not the fastest in the world. I mean, look, I've got one salt so far. There we go. We've got a little salt mine going there, too. But look at that. There's quite a lot of creatures here. Am I still quite close to my base? Because if I am, I might be able to build another little fauna area here. So when I do come to get my salt, I can get some more chewy wires at the same time. Yeah, let's put that there. And uh, let's put one of these here. Now, of course, this is quite a distance away from my solar array. And at the moment, there's no power going to any of these. So let's just put down a couple of solar panels. And I'm not too fussed about destroying the landscape here. I'll just put down these here. I do. Now, I do like to connect these to a battery, just in case there's a surplus of solar. So I'll just put down a quick battery here. But I should only really need one battery to power what we've got up here. Slap that in there. And let's just um, interact with this. Let's put some more bait sticks in there. So we've got a couple of little droid farms scattered about the mountain. There you go, they're, they're on their way. Lovely. So there we go. I've got a nice little automated farm going on. And I'd have to show you this maybe in, I don't know, about give it another 40 minutes or so. And we'll see how we got on. The only thing is, is if you turn your back on the creatures and they despawn, I find that the actual creature element of this, the chewy wires aspect, might not be all that great. But the actual mining of the emerald and the auto harvesters that I've fueled they should give me a full yield of everything that, that I should be expecting to get. The only thing is, because this is a C class, so it's not all that fast, I might be waiting a little while. It says there I'll be waiting about four hours before I get 6,500, which isn't the greatest, to be honest. Hopefully you guys in the Viewerverse will find your spot a lot better. Hopefully you're going to find a flatter planet than me. But I wanted to show you that a lot of stuff inside of No Man's Sky can be automated to a degree when the creatures decide that they're going to stay put. I mean, at the moment, I don't even think this one's got any creatures by it. No, look. So they've all despawned again. Oh, look, there's one over there. Well, look, I've only got two chewy wires in there. When you turn your back on the creatures, it, 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 it throws it. It's not good enough to know that the creatures should be there all the time. It's like, I bet this one over here has just been completely useless now that the creatures have despawned and not come back. I bet that's got no chewy wires in. Look, completely redundant. So when it comes to fauna farming, you have to find a planet that is literally covered in creatures and is flat, not like this mountainous mess that I've got here. But I just wanted to show you, in theory, if you find yourself a nice flat planet that has water, you can actually auto-harvest there... And then if you've got a little fishing jetty down here, you could just wait. It's like, what do I do now for the four hours for that idiom to fill up that storage silo? Well, right now, I could just do a load of fishing. You know, and get my fish and rod out. Make sure I've got some bait on it. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah. And bait it up so I can catch myself some decent fish. And I could do some fishing while I'm waiting. And while I'm doing the fishing, everything else here is still doing its thing. See, if you had some flat land next to a pond full of animals, it'd be even better. 
But, you know, I think you get the general premise, though. Now, if you really wanted to, if you wanted to be proper lazy, you can go into the actual settings inside of here. Uh, and go into difficulty. Scroll all the way down to where you can see a fishing and put it on auto catch as well. Apply those settings. And then I can just leave the joypad alone. And it's going to auto make my fishing as well. It's going to actually catch the fish for me, people. As well as those fishing pods. So, nice. You can just chill now. Have a nice little relaxing time. And get your emerald on the bake. Everything's automated. Sweet. I'll be back in a bit and show you my progress in a bit. Well, we'll just catch one more fish. Let's see what I catch. And I'll show you the fact that I'm not even touching my joypad. Boom. There we go. Uncommon fish. And that's pretty much all the automation you can do in No Man's Sky right now. Now, I did play a game called Power World. Really liked Power World. And the automation in Power World, I'd say, was maybe five times greater than that of No Man's Sky. If you want to see my Power World playlist, I'll put it up there. You can go hit that up. Anyway, I'll reconvene in, in an hour or so and show you the progress of what I've got. Oh, cool. Got a scorpion fish. Well, it's only been 15 minutes or so, chums. I just want to make myself a cup of tea. But um, I was just thinking, it's, it's pretty rare to find a planet that has droids and water. So if you want to come to this planet and build a base, you're more than welcome to. But what I would say, if you want to make a droid fishing farm, you need to find a flatter planet with water than this. Because right now, when I'm fishing, what you need to have is some sort of flat area where you can see all the droids and you can see them being harvested. Because as soon as you turn your back, they despawn. They're not inside of the line of sight. They're not in a level of detail draw. They despawn. So it's not going to work too well. I mean, I could try and find a flatter area on this planet that has droids and build a little fishing sort of nook. Or I could try and find another planet and do a separate video on that. You see, I'm looking back up the hill right now and I'm not seeing any green dots or red dots for the creatures, isn't there? So I don't think I'm going to get any chewy wires. But anyway, it's been about, I'd say it's been close to half an hour. Not quite half an hour. I mean, if you look at how many fish I've caught, that'll give you an indication of, of what I've got. I mean, I've only got a few. So you go, I can release these fish anyway. I don't know why it has to keep going over to my freighter all the blinking time. That's annoying. But if I release all of these, I'm going to get a load of nanites anyway. So I'm getting nanites for the fish. Yeah. And you've got to do them one at a time. It's really annoying though, going back to the freighter. Why is it doing that? If you do know why, it just keeps locking onto my freighter all the time. That would be nice. Well, there we go. Done those. And I can go down into these fishing traps. And there you go, got a load of those. So put those over to my exosuit. Release those as well. Get a load of quicksilver for those. Well, not quicksilver, nanites. Jeez, look at all those. There you are. So that's working quite nicely. And this is just half an hour, you know? So yeah, let's swim over here. I mean, you get the exact time difference once I go up to the emerald because you'll probably be able to see the timestamp before and after there we go let's uh, release that ah well, it was working a minute ago all right there you go there you go wow lovely if you're on foot i wish it would default to the planet if you're like you know in your ship in your sh i wish it would default to your ship and if you were in your freighter, I wish it defaulted to your freighter. To skip you over to the freighter page when you're not even in your freighter. It's like an annoyance. Right, anyway, let's head on up the hill then. And let's see how the auto feeders are going. And I bet you I haven't got any chewy wires apart from the two that we saw the creatures actually do. You've got to be watching it the whole time. Look at that. Pants. All right. So that part of this is a little bit pants. Mainly because the creatures despawn when you're not looking. Look, the creature's there. And now he's coming over for food. No, I've only got three chewy wires. Now, the chewy wires, if I find those inside my inventory. Yeah, yarn. There we go. I can eat those, and I'm going to get nanites as well. 
you'll see how many nanites just above my head. It's not a great amount. But yeah, you've got to be watching the creatures or else it doesn't work. All right, well, let's go and have a look at how much emerald we've got from our main storage silo right here. There we are. So the automation in, in No Man's Sky isn't great. And you can see there I've got 450 there. Cool. Well, let's just take that anyway. Lovely. And now I can go and have a look at my other auto harvesters. Oh, we didn't check the oxygen, did we? Let's go and have a look how much oxygen we've got. It looks like it's run out of fuel already. And we've got 250. That's not too bad, to be fair. And you can recharge that again, just using like carbon. And we'd head on over to my other auto harvesters, which was the salt deposit over there. Let's go over there then, and let's have a look how that's done. Okay, well the creatures at this one seem to be a bit busier. Anyway, let's um, let's have a look how these are getting on. Ah, oh, got 69 salt in there at the moment. Not too bad. What about in the middle one? 69 in that one as well. 69 in there too. Pretty darn nice. Well, let's go and have a look how this is getting on then. Oh, great. It's because the creatures have only just spawned back in, but at least they're feeding here anyway. I mean, I could just sit around and wait for these to harvest all the salt and then check on this and see how many chewy wires we've got. I mean, I could just sit here and wait for a bit and see how we get on. So there we go, let's just have a little sit down for a moment. And you know what? I said I'd made a cup of tea. I haven't drunk that cup of tea. I'll drink that cup of tea right now, people. So there we go. I'll drink the tea. And then we'll see how these this harvester's doing while I'm watching it. And how much salt we get. Yummy. Go on. I'll reconvene in a moment when I finish my tea. I was just thinking, though, people, if you could find a curious deposit on a droid planet, you could be refining your curious deposits while all this is going on as well you could really go to town but trying to find curious deposits on a droid planet that has water good luck yeah that that's a, that'd be a feat and a half be honest people drinking my tea with this gentle piano music watching these creatures with their little ding -ding 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 noises of their feet it's actually really relaxing really relaxing If you wonder what I was doing then, people, I was just getting a thumbnail. Nothing that'd do, to be honest, for a thumbnail for this video. Right, well, I've finished my cup of tea, so you're looking at, what, two minutes or so? Anyway, let's jump back over into game view. And look at that, I've got 26 cheery wires. When you're actually watching it, it's a lot more lucrative. Okay, right, so here we go, let's go into here then. And let's just munch all of those. We'll see how many we get for munching all of them. Pow! And let's come out. I got myself 192 nanites in the space of, what, five minutes? Just drinking a cup of tea? So it is quite lucrative when you look at it that way. There you go, I've got 90 salt going on there. Might as well take that out and go to the next one. Get 90 in there as well. Lovely. And we can get 90 out of here. Now, I wonder if this is far enough away to put down another oxygen harvester right here. Let's have a quick look, see. Let's see if we can put another one here. Atmosphere harvester. That's atmosphere. Where's the... That, that, is, that is the one. That is the one that I want. There we go. I'm going down here then. And... Oh, look. Rather than oxygen, we're getting nitrogen in this one. All right, well, there we go. We've got another little automated unit there. Right, well, I haven't uploaded this base. Now, I've only made this base mainly as an example for all of you guys. Now, I've used quite a lot of parts to build all this. And to be honest, it's not as functional as I would like. I would like to hope that you guys in the viewerverse can take the information that I've put out here and make yourself something far better than this. I know that I can make something far better than this. So you know what? I'm going to delete it, but it's just to show you the principles behind all of this. There we go. Delete a mondo. Kaboom. I mean, personally, I would like to make a fishing and nanite harvesting farm, but I don't think this is the best planet for it. Mainly because it's just not flat enough, which is a bit of a shame. But anyway, people, 
Hopefully you've learned something inside of this video when it comes to automization and where to set up and how to set up an automated farm. So there we go, peeps. That's, that's pretty much everything I've got for you. Has it deleted all these? It has. It's just left the icons there. Hello, games! Hello, games! You have yet another bug. Hmm, I don't know whether that's a bug or by, whether it's by design, to be honest, people. What's this on my screen right there? Is that, is that a reflection? What is that exactly? Very odd. Let's turn that on, see if that changes anything. Has that been there the whole freaking time? I guess it has. That's unusual. Oh, I see what that is. It's because my curtains are open slightly. It's sunlight. That's what that is. <laughs> there we go. Fix that. Until next time. Goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.